My name is Michelle Jameson, and I have been teaching social and emotional learning and mindfulness for the last 10 years in corporations, universities, and hospitals. I also offer professional development to administrators and educators, and I teach mindfulness and SEL in classrooms and music ensembles ranging from third grade all the way through high school. After seeing the great positive impact that these skills have brought to students, whether it's improved academic achievement, developing deeper relationships and communication, developing skills like self-awareness and self-regulation, or improving focus and concentration, I feel inspired and compelled to share this knowledge with you. As teachers, the care and concern that we have for our students extends well beyond the classroom. We all know how important SEL is for our students. And the question I want to answer today is how? How do we bring these important skills to our classrooms? How do we integrate SEL into the music curriculum? Once you see how easily it is to integrate SEL into the music curriculum, you'll be able to notice opportunities and see where you can put this into your lesson plans until it becomes automatic and the habit of integrating SEL into your music lessons will become second nature. These skills are important for our students, not just in our music classrooms, not just in school, but they'll transfer through to the rest of their lives. And who else to bring these important skills to them but us? I'd like to start with a quote. Carl Orff talks about music instruction in this way. He says, music begins inside human beings, and so must any instruction. Not at the instrument, not with the first finger, nor with the first position, not with this or that chord. The starting point is one's own stillness, listening to oneself, the being ready for music, listening to one's own heartbeat and breathing. Cassell has identified five core components of SEL. The first two deal with the self and our personal responsibilities of self-awareness and self-regulation. The second two deal with how we treat others, how we relate to others, and how we interact in the community in social awareness and relationship skills. The third section of these components, or the fifth component, is responsible decision-making. Today, I want to focus on the first aspect, which is self-awareness. The benefits of mindfulness and SEL are many. You can see the list that I have provided here, which is not all-encompassing, but includes some of the big and more important benefits. Take a look and see which ones could be influential for your students. Just like me, I bet you wish this for all of your students. And this is part of your intention when you teach, to help them develop trust and patience, to help them develop empathy and sense of well-being, to help them relax and be creative, to use the right side of their brain to help balance out and provide a full education for them, to help them be more present and help them to let go of the stressors of each and every day. In education, we often think of knowledge as something that comes from the outside moving in, something that is imparted to us, with SEL, the intention is to look at what's going on inside, to the inner knowledge, to focus on the sensations that we feel, the emotions going on, the thoughts that run through our mind, because that is the knowledge that we use to make important decisions for ourselves. Knowing what makes you angry helps you to avoid situations or move through situations where anger arises in you a little more easily. Knowing how you think, knowing what thoughts trigger you, 
knowing what makes you happy. These are all very important components of living that help us engage not only with music, but with our lives. When we talk about self-awareness, the conversation typically goes to the body. One of the easiest ways that I have found to engage students in self-awareness is through the body scan. In the MBSR class that I teach, which is an eight-week course designed for adults, and the six-week course that I lead for teens, we focus on the body scan, moving our attention from our feet, through our legs, our hips, through the back and chest and the arms, all the way to the head, and we take a few minutes focusing on each part individually. In class, it can be as simple as, students, I want you to direct your attention to your feet. Feel your feet flat on the floor. Crinkle your toes, see how they feel. Spread your toes wide. Feel them inside your socks or inside your shoes. If they have sandals on, maybe they feel the air touching their skin. And just get them acquainted with how their feet feel. If you're setting them up in their playing posture or singing posture, you could have them feel their feet on the floor, then shift their attention to their hips on the chair, feel up the length of their spine, sliding their shoulders down the back, and then direct their attention to their hands or to their face as they get ready to play. During music listening, The body awareness can come into play. For instance, after you play some music, you can ask them, how does your body feel listening to that piece? Or what did you feel in your chest when you were playing that passage? Or how do your lips feel? How does your face feel? Did it draw up into a smile while you were listening to that? Did you feel your face frowning and your eyes becoming closer together, your eyebrows moving? Did you feel relaxed and comfortable and your body felt at ease? I also use the body scan or body awareness during a break. If they're feeling restless, I would encourage you to move Have them roll their shoulders, maybe stand up and sway side to side, especially if you're in choir. If you're in band, you might keep them in the seat or have them simply stand up and move through their neck and their head, maybe stretch forward with their hands and open up their chest. Help them move out of their brains, so to speak, in the thinking mode, into the being mode. It's also good for transitions, especially if you have blocked scheduling or with distance learning to let go, get up and move, get them back into their bodies, not so much into the thinking. The intention of bringing awareness to our emotions is to encourage internal listening and also to expand the vocabulary that we use to talk about emotions. When you ask someone how they're doing, typically the answer is, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm doing okay. But if you actually sat them down and had a deeper conversation, you would find that underneath fine is a whole host of emotions. They could be feeling a little bit anxious. Maybe they're worried about something that's to come. Perhaps they're feeling excited about something that's coming up in the future. Maybe they're feeling a little bit let down or unhappy about something. But there's a rich tapestry of emotions going on at all times. In regards to listening, to music, often we think this is a happy piece, this is a sad piece. So the emotions are limited. We have the top six or eight emotions, excited, sad, angry, maybe a little sick, (laughs) bored, unhappy, happy, or surprised. But can we go deeper? During distance learning here in the spring, I offered my students listening activities And when I asked them how the piece made them feel, these are the typical answers that I got, which is to be expected because they haven't been asked to really evaluate and listen critically to what's going on. So once you start to ask them these questions and you dig a little deeper, 
perhaps you can find different expressions of their emotions. For example, underneath sad, would they feel heavy? Did this piece make you upset or sorrowful or mournful? If it was a happy piece, what is, was it delightful? Was it charming or pleasing? What about loving or joyful? Don't be afraid to be very specific when you're asking for these kinds of emotions. You're developing a rich tapestry for which they can talk about and communicate. Once they can verbalize how the pieces make them feel, then start to get even more specific. Instead of how did this piece make you feel, how did the soaring trumpet line at measure 12 make you feel? How did the timpani part that came in at the very end of the piece add to your excitement? Or how did it accentuate what you were feeling? How did it change what you were feeling? Once we can get them to look at the minute changes and alterations in what's going on in the piece, they can start to transfer that into their own playing or their own singing, their own musical expression. And also don't be afraid to allow time for silence. When you ask them to internalize and do some digging into how they really feel, they need time to look. So when you finish a listening example, for instance, allow some time to lapse. So when the last sound fades, open some space. And then ask for a response. So they've had some time to reflect and really get to know. They don't have to be in a rush for an answer. They don't have to grab the first thing that comes up. They've got time so they can figure out exactly how they're feeling in the moment, which is what we're interested in. When we're dealing with self-awareness in regards to thoughts, we're simply acknowledging and accepting our thoughts just as they are and looking at them just as thoughts. They may or may not reflect reality but simply acknowledging what's coming up for us allows us to see them in a different light, in a different perspective. It's important for students to know that there are no right or wrong answers, no good or bad thoughts. A thought is just a thought. Oftentimes in class, I give the students a few moments of mindfulness. I write it on the board, it's in the agenda. And my students each have a notebook that they pick up along with their band folder or their choir folder and take it to their seats. So after our few minutes of breathing and breath awareness, I ask them a question. For instance, write down three thoughts that you're having right now. And I give them time to journal their three thoughts. Whether they share them with their neighbors or not is up to you but simply identifying the thoughts and writing them down helps them to be aware and start to see their thoughts. And notice that thoughts are just thoughts. They don't need to be acted upon. They don't need to be shunned or pushed away. They're just saying, oh, here's a thought, and then let it go. Having them move their attention around to different places, whether it's in the body scan, whether they're being aware of their emotions or whether you're directing attention to their thoughts is called cognitive control. Being able to put your mind where you want it to be, when you want it to be there. This is another aspect of that whole process. It's important for them to be able to do in music making, of course. It'll help them to quell their performance anxiety, help them to be in the moment, but it will also help them when they're taking an English test, when they show up for a job interview, when their parents are trying to get their attention and they're playing a video game. In all different aspects of their life, cognitive control is an important part and an important skill for them to develop. Another aspect of the three thoughts 
could come when you're doing a listening activity. For instance, you could listen to a piece and afterwards say, please write down three thoughts that you're having while you're listening. Or write down three thoughts that you're having now that you've heard the whole piece. What does it make you think? Or what do you think the composer was thinking when he wrote this piece? And add some empathy along with it. Along with getting their thoughts about the complete pieces, feel free to direct their attention to specific aspects of the piece. For instance, you could say, this time as you listen, I want you to focus on the percussion. And they can write down thoughts about what the percussion does and how the composer uses the percussion in this piece. Or focus on the flutes and the flute tone and how it adds to the ambiance. Or how do the flute lines and the percussion lines intersect? There are so many ways for them to develop their acceptance and awareness of their thoughts through the listening and performing aspects of music. The National Coalition for Core Arts Standards has identified four artistic processes that we use in music education. Performing, creating, responding, and connecting. Typically in our music ensembles, we focus on the performing aspect of our artistic process. But with distance learning, we are invited to explore more of the other three aspects. And you can see how the examples that I've given you about self-awareness play into these three other parts. For instance, in the creating realm, conceiving and developing artistic ideas and work. You can see how being aware of our thoughts and our emotions allow us to get into the composer's realm, for instance, and see how the creative process unfolds, see what composers look for. In responding and understanding how the arts convey meaning, you can see how listening examples and being aware of how music makes us feel gets us in touch, not just with responding, but also with connecting. How do we respond to music? And how does it connect us to each other, to the composer, to people all over the world? How does this common humanity play a part into what we do each and every day in our music making? We relate it personally. How does it make you feel? We see how it makes our friends feel, our colleagues, our teacher. So empathy, compassion, connecting, collaborating, all come into play here. So I hope you feel free to explore all these different realms as you see how SEL is integrated into our music education system and how you can use SEL, not just advocacy for our programs, but to help expand and illuminate music and our students' lives. Finally, I've created a short practice to help develop the skills of self-awareness. The link will take you to a three-minute breathing space, which you can use for your students, as well as for yourself, perhaps before you sit down for a day of distance learning, maybe after your teaching as you transition to your family, or any time you simply need a few moments to breathe. You can find me at musicandmindfulness.org if you have any questions or need some resources or want to learn more about how to integrate mindfulness and SEL into your music curriculum. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.